Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to talk about mechanism design. I think it may be the last talk in this conference where, which is not going to be on mechanism design, perhaps, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, on the other hand, this talk, let me tell you something about the history of that. Uh, it started, in fact, from my first time being a Dutch tool, where I think Christos uh, talked about some complexity of Nash equilibria and hardness, exactly like yesterday, and then I had the same reaction as Ilya had yesterday. What about correlated equilibria? So he said, oh, that's clear. Okay. Well, turned out not to be clear, and then I kept asking uh, my friends in computer science. In fact, in the year that Noam and Michal organized in Jerusalem, I proposed this as a problem in, during the, one of the panels or something, and everybody said it's a very good problem, but... Uh, Nobody gave me an answer. So at the end, I told uh, Noam, look, this problem can't stay unsolved. We have to, ha to handle it, and we did it. So now I'm going to tell you what happens. So uh, first of all, there is a paper, which you can find on my web page. Now, um, I'm assuming that you know what the correlated equilibrium is, but it doesn't really matter. OK? Uh, <laughs> what will matter for the talk is the following thing. So for simplicity, we are going to take uh, simple games. Simple games are n-person games where every player has just two strategies, okay, or actions. It's called, it says actions here, but two strategies, okay? Simple. Uh, in the end, uh, as I say, it's for whatever two you want. You means replace two by m, where m is the number of strategies, and everything will go through, okay? But let's talk about two. So, a correlated equilibrium is defined by a probability distribution in each cell. Each n tuple of actions, as what I call a cell, you have a probability. So there are two to the power n unknowns, which are non-negative and add up to one, and there are constraints. Now, because everybody has just two strategies, for those that know correlated equilibria, it says when you are supposed to play strategy one, you prefer it to switching to strategy two, and you are supposed to play strategy two, you prefer it to switching to strategy one. Those are just two constraints. So in total, we have two n plus one constraints, which are linear. Everything is linear, so it's a very simple problem. Two to the power n unknowns, two n plus one, linear inequalities. What could be easier than that? Yes? Very easy. So, linear programming, we know there is an algorithm for computing a correlated equilibrium whose complexity is polynomial in, in unfortunately, two to the power n, which makes it exponential in n. Okay? So far, so good. Now, but, now comes the but. Okay? Uh, there are dynamics, which in fact Eva mentioned uh, in the previous talk and have been mentioned here. There are regret based dynamics where you can. Now, those are dynamics for players playing the game. But of course, any dynamic we can emulate. Computer scientists emulate everything, so they can emulate dynamics by emulating everything that all the players do. And so we get an algorithm out of a dynamic. And we get approximate correlated equilibria with high probability. And how long does it take? Extremely fast. Log n over epsilon square steps. Now remember, we're in a place where data is 2 to the power n. So it turns out that the number of steps it takes, by the way, the estimation of the number of steps is due to Cesar Bianchi and Lugosi. Uh, the estimation of the number of steps, sorry, the, the number of steps it takes, log n of the order of log n. Remember, it's 2 to the power n, so it's double exponential reduction, which is quite amazing in retrospect, okay? Uh, so, now, the way we want to measure, um, since we don't want to get into issues of how many computations you make, anyway, the, the computations made here at every step are trivial. You just add some, a bunch of numbers and you take ratios. There is nothing, you don't compute fixed points or any such fancy things, it's very trivial. But the way that we are going to measure it is, is by the thing called query complexity, which is how many queries on the data of the problem the algorithm makes. And the query means we look at a cell, namely one of the two to the power n uh, action combinations, and ask what is the payoff of player two there? Or what is the payoff of player one there? So the total data, we have two to the power n cells. In each one we have n numbers, the payoffs of the n players. So there are n times two to the power n possible uh, data point, uh, data, not points, data, what do you call it? Hmm? 
pieces, pieces, pieces of data. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, no, just so that we, we calibrate, uh, right? And so we ask how many queries out of those the algorithm makes. So it turns out that the fact that the number of steps is log n over epsilon square, but each one of the players has to do something, so we have to multiply it by n or maybe by n square. Anyway, it's polynomial in n, okay? That's what we care. So, conclusion. There are randomized algorithms for finding approximate correlated equilibria whose query complexity is polynomial in N. Remember, linear programming says everything is exponential in N. Okay? Now, is it a surprise? Well, it shouldn't be much of a surprise because think about it. First of all, we know there are correlated equilibria whose support is of size 2n plus 1 because we have 2n plus 1 inequalities, so basic solution has support to 2n plus 1. So in principle, the fact that, you know, uh, uh, we find something like this quickly shouldn't be a surprise. Then, uh, so that's one non-surprise uh, factor. The other is that if we use the Lipton and Young result that talks about how big the, which I think in this community everybody knows about. There is someone who doesn't know about it? Oh, okay, good. So. Uh, I didn't know about it until a couple of years ago. Uh, so this, says, uh, this asks the following question. Suppose I have a two-person zero-sum game, okay? I'm player one and there is player two. Suppose player two has M strategies. I have many more strategies than M, let's say. How many strategies do I need to play with positive probability in order to guarantee that I'll find an optimal strategy? Answer, very easy, M. So in order to, optimal, to find an optimal strategy when the other player has M strategies, I also need to use M strategies. Now, how many strategies do I need to use if I want to find an epsilon optimal strategy? Uh -huh. The answer is log M over epsilon square. Uh, with some constants, which are two or four or whatever. We don't care about those, okay? So to find an optimal strategy, I need the support to be as large as the number of strategies of my opponent. To find an epsilon optimal strategy, I can find it with support that is of the size logarithmic in that. Okay, that's a very nice result and very useful. Uh, now remember that regret-based dynamics take that many steps. Okay, which means now the, the way regret-based dynamics work, after that many steps, we look at the empirical distribution of what has happened and give to each one, say, t steps. Each one we give weight one over t. So the support of the correlated equilibrium or approximate correlated equilibrium to get is exactly log n over epsilon square. Uh, up to some constant, and again, between here and here, there is maybe a constant of 16 or 32. I mean, it's not anything like zillions, okay? So it's quite amazing that those regret-based dynamics, which are, again, very simple and, as I tend to say, quite stupid, you know? But let's not get into it. In fact, they converge as fast as theoretically possible because you couldn't get something that will be an epsilon correlated equilibrium faster than that because that will, that will, will not work with this. Okay. Uh, so remember, there are randomized algorithms that compute approximate correlated equilibria whose number of queries is polynomial in n. So the, there are two to the power n cells. Nevertheless, you are going to find the correlated equilibrium. You are only going to check a very, very tiny proportion of the cells of the data of the problem, okay? Our exact correlated equilibria. We want an exact, not just an approximate, an exact. How long will it take? How many queries do we need? How about using deterministic rather than randomized algorithms, okay? How long will it take? Okay, so that was my question. Uh, we know that randomized algorithms for approximate correlated equilibria work. We have something that works very well. How about the other possibilities? Okay, so here is the table that we want to fill. Namely, we want to talk about approximate correlated and exact correlated, and the algorithm may be randomized or deterministic, and you already have one cell that says it's polynomial in N. Question, what about the other cells? Okay, so. Babichenko and Barman showed that in this cell, if you want an exact correlated equilibrium and you want to do it by a deterministic algorithm, you require, oops, you require exponentially many queries, okay? Now, is this due to the fact that you want exact or is it due to the fact that you want deterministic algorithm? Answer, both or either, whichever way you want to say, okay? So the moment you want exact correlated equilibrium, exponential. 
The moment you want your agar to be deterministic, even if you are satisfied with approximate equilibrium, it's going to be exponential. Yes? What about the Papa Dimitri Rough Garden algorithm? Am I I'm going to talk about it. Uh, but okay, you asked, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer now. So I won't keep you in suspense. Uh, so, Papa Dimitri and Lovegarten, uh, one can look at two ways. Either the game is given in a very compact manner, which means it's very easy to know what the payoffs are. You don't need the two to the power n complexity. Or alternatively, you can make queries on mixed strategies. So for example, you want to ask, what is the payoff where everybody plays half-half, IID? Now that means taking two to the power n entries in the matrix and averaging to those two to the power n. Okay? Now, if you count those queries, then everything becomes nice and polynomial. But you only count pure queries, namely, you can go to a cell, ask what the payoff is there. Okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, here are the t two theorems, if you want to see precise theorems, uh, which is always good, uh, says the following. So, theorem A, let's start with theorem A. Every deterministic algorithm that finds even a half approximate correlated equilibrium. So, if half, then of course for any epsilon less than half. In every n person by strategy game, by strategy means they only have two strategies, with pairs that are just 0, 1, okay? Requires uh, 2 to the power n, and, and this omega, by the way, I don't know, it's uh, n over 4, n over 6, something. I mean, again, it's not uh, n over zillions, yes? I want to say that all the constants are reasonable constants, that uh, there is nothing hidden there. Requires 2 to the power n queries in the worst case, okay? And the other theorem says, if you want to find an exact correlated equilibrium, every algorithm that you can think of, whether randomized or deterministic, will require, uh, now here it's a little more subtle, because uh, unlike in the first theorem, we are talking about queries as well as a support of the output. So we are going to count not just how many queries we made, but if you give me an answer whose support is very large, that's going to count against you. So we are counting the support plus a number of queries. Also, always assume the support is small. You can always, if you have a large solution in mind, you can subsample it from it. Not if you want exact correlated equilibrium. Okay? That's why here this didn't appear. Not, that's ex not exactly why, but that suggests that when, so long as you want approximate, then you, you can do, so here we don't need to include this in the cost. The size of the exact solution is 2 to the n, why is the, pro that's why you measure the... No. Mm -hmm. No, it's a number, of, no, it, in fact, it's a number of queries, but the, the, um, if you don't count, so, open problem, okay? Drop this. Is this going to be exponential n? We don't know. But just the answer size can be 2 to the omega n. No? Always a could, short answer. Could be, could be, but that's, that's that not. There's always a short answer, right? There's always oh, an answer outside. That was my question. So, is there for an, a short answer for an exact yeah. is The basic yeah. solution. Okay. The basic solution, right? Okay. The question is whether there is an algorithm that finds it. That's an issue. The fact that there are nice here, yeah, but find an algorithm that finds a basic solution in time that is less, or in the number of queries that is less than two to the power n. That's the whole issue. So okay. You have an algorithm that has few queries but gives you a big answer. Is that is that the? Is that Do the we have an algorithm? Uh, it seems like a strange. Uh, way to phrase it. So I mean, I was wondering if you have an example of an algorithm that uses very few queries, but gives you... I don't think we have examples of algorithms. So you only, we only prove negative impossibilities here. I mean, the, uh, the answer can be uniform over the whole hypercube. Okay, that's a short answer that is a long answer, right? I see, I see. <laughs> but how did you figure this out from this... Like, it's puzzling to me that you could know that something complicated like that is the answer, having not queried all the answers. You're right. So if it's zero yeah. error, then you don't need this assumption. But the point is, if you allow error in your randomized algorithm, that you're not sure that it's the right answer, then... <laughs> Okay, questions about that to Noam, please. You realize that's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> okay. So yeah. It has a short certificate of positive answers. So you are in NP, in a sense, or is that wrong? To put it this way. I mean, you have a short certificate. So you require exponential time. Is this relative to some complexity assumption or? No complexity assumption or anything. We just, we just count the number of queries and the support of the data, of, of the, uh, the answer. Bernard, it's not an MP, the input is exponential. No. It's 2 to the power n. The data, the data is n times 2 to the power n. Okay? So I don't know what NP with respect to what you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, the fact that there's a short answer, I thought, would be okay. So okay. Yes. Going back to theorem B. So you have this condition B 
the yes, okay. Here is another open question. So it's, uh, do we have an open question session today? So you, that I have a few, and there'll be, there'll be even more significant questions at the end. But this is an open question, which is, uh, so in a moment, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll give you the idea of the proof. The game that we build, here, the game that we build has payoffs just zero and one. Here, the game that we build, we need more bits in the payoffs, okay? So the number of bits that we need is something like n. We need numbers to be of the magnitude of two to the power n as utilities. Question is, is this correct also with b equal one, let's say? So if we restrict ourselves to games where, which have payoffs only in zero, one, is this result correct? We don't know, okay? Our construction, uh, construction is not easy there, yes, I must say, but I'll, I'll give you some hints about that. Anyway, so here is the table again. Uh, approximate correlated equilibrium, randomized algorithm, number of queries is polynomial in n. Everything else, exponential in n. Now, uh, how about coarse correlated equilibria, yes? Everybody is talking about coarse correlated equilibria. What's, ans what's the answer? No change, because there are only two actions. The moment the game, every player is only two strategies, then coarse correlated and correlated is exactly the same. So anything bad you say about correlated, immediately translates to coarse correlated. Going to coarse correlated doesn't help you, suddenly you get something polynomial here, okay? Uh, very good. Okay, it's written here. Okay, so whoever asked about that. Uh, okay, now what's the idea of the proof? So I'll, I'll try. <coughs> I'll try to give you simple. Simple uh, again. Uh, there are technical details, but the idea is, is as follows. So what's a game? What's an action combination? Is an n-tuple of bits. Okay. So think about think think about the n-dimensional hypercube where the vertices are all the two to the power n action combinations, okay? Now, an edge that connects two nodes is what? Just one bit changes. Put on that, label that edge with the regret from moving from here to here or from here to here, one is the minus the other, of course. The difference between payoffs, okay? Now, everything you want to talk about, correlated equilibrium and so on, you can express in terms of regrets, namely payoff differences. The payoffs themselves don't matter, so you can always make, uh, you can express everything in terms of regrets, okay? So essentially, you have the hypercube, and each edge is labeled with a regret. Now, uh, what's a query? A query, you take a node, and ask what's the payoff there, or what are the regrets there? And it doesn't matter if you get all the n regrets for the price of one, multiplying by n, that doesn't matter. It's still polynomial, okay? Uh, now, uh, what happens? If the number of queries is too small, so what happens? It's like, I have an algorithm. The algorithm makes queries. The algorithm makes queries, I provide the answers. And the way I provide the answers, I'm free to provide answers. Of course, once I set up some regret here, if I'm asked at the other node, I cannot change. I'm committed. So once I tell you what's written on one edge, that's it, it's fixed. But I can keep giving you answers in such a way that there'll be no correlated equilibrium in the area where you ask questions. And the way I do it, I make sure that the regrets are positive rather than negative. Correlated equilibrium goes with negative regrets. Okay, it's the same as negative regrets. And what I make sure that you keep asking questions and every question you ask, I give you positive regret. Okay, now I can do it so long as you ask uh, so many questions. Of course, if you ask everything, I cannot do because every regret appears once with plus, once with minus. But with enough queries, I can do that. And uh, now it's a construction, okay? I, uh, I, of course, can't get into that. Read the paper, okay? Uh, uh, what about theorem, sorry? Okay, what about theorem B? Theorem B is even, is, is, is even more complicated. What we construct is we take a random path in the hypercube, and along the path, we make sure that all the regrets are, not all the regrets, the sum of the regrets is positive. Essentially, uh, it's enough to work with the sum of the players of the regrets. You make sure that all the regrets are positive. Only at the end node, we, we, we balance it by making it negative. So the only way to find a correlated equilibrium, you have to find the end point of the path. Now, if it's a random path, good luck in finding the end point. Okay, it's going to take you a very, very long time. Okay, essentially, uh, you must follow the path. Follow the path, so we must query along the path, because every, essentially, every n log n steps, there is a complete mixing, and you, you, even if you know where you are now, n log n steps from now, you'll have no idea where you'll be, you'll be in a random point in the cube, so you really have to find out where the path is again, and you have to keep following the path. Uh, now, it's much more subtle than that, there are various difficulties, but that's essentially the idea of the proof. 
Okay. Now you see why one bit is not enough. I need the, I need the regrets to keep increasing along the path. Uh, that's why I need n bits. Okay. How is this different than Babichenko's lower bound? Uh, how is this? So Babichenko uh, is a much simpler version because you have both exact and deterministic algorithm, and it's again the construction is similar. Again, you look in the hypercube and you put the regrets, but there, that the argument be, is is relatively simpler to that. But it's the same class of arguments. So Babichenko that came before this, or the Babichenko that came after this? After the random. Oh, which which Babichenko? Ah, sorry, no, I know which Babichenko, but which Babichenko paper you talk about? <laughs> Randomized communication complexity, which implies query complexity, lower bounds, of course. So any, any... We are talking about correlated equilibrium, not Nash now. Right, right. I'm just talking about, he did the same trick with the random walk on the hypercube, right? Yes, he used this. Okay. He used this, idea, but that was for the Nash now. For the second one, yeah. For the second, not, not for the... Call. I, was, I was talking, I thought you were asking about the uh, Babichenko and Barman. Uh, paper, which is relevant here. That, that you are talking about later things, okay? Uh, okay. Now, uh, so now a few more, a few more uh, pieces of information I want to add and, and tell you uh, why is this still an inter There is still a very interesting question here that is still open. Okay. Uh, so first of all, notice that uh, verification. So if I give you a correlated equilibrium whose support is of size k. To verify it, I need to check k times n, uh, something, oh, the order of k times n or 2n entries. So if you give me a correlated equilibrium with small support to verify it, it's still small. Okay? Very good. Now, if we talk about, if we allow queries for mixed strategies, uh, you asked me, right? Okay, which is exactly what uh, the algorithm of Papa Dimitri and Ravgarten do with the addition of uh, Kevin and, uh, and Jing. Uh, then you can do everything polynomially, but that requires queries that are much more sophisticated, is queries of what is the payoff of a mixed strategy, which again, uh, it's uh, difficult to obtain. Uh, now, suppose I were to take a, linear pro a general linear programming problem of the same size as correlated equilibrium problem, which is 2 to the power n unknow uh, unknowns and 2n or n constraints, doesn't matter, yes? How many queries do I, will I need to find an approximate solution? Answer, exponential, okay? So again, take an, a general LP problem of identical size as a correlated equilibrium problem. Whereas the correlated equilibrium problem had a randomized algorithm that gives an approximate solution with polynomially many queries, that is not true for general linear programming. In fact, I think two to the power n unknowns and even two constraints is enough to get that you require exponentially many, many queries. Queries means coefficients? Queries means coefficients, yes. Which are, coefficients are exactly the regrets, that's what enters in that, that you have a, yeah. Okay, so correlated equilibrium is a special linear programming problem because it has this nice property that you can get approximate solutions, randomized algorithm with polynomially many queries, okay? Now, how is it, in what way is it special? So let me tell you one way which is special. Look at the dual of that problem, dual of that LP. Turns out that that dual neatly decomposes in n separate problems that are each one easy, okay? Now that's really at the basis of the existence proof of correlated equilibria of uh, Schmeider and myself. Uh, that's the basis for those that know dynamics for what's called uncoupled dynamics in the world of regret matching and other heuristics. And that's the basis of the Papa Dimitri and Avgarten thing. Okay, so this, the fact that the dual is, is nicely decomposable is a special property of correlated equilibrium linear programming, which is not, doesn't hold in general. But now comes a big question. Why does it help only for randomized algorithms that give you approximate solutions and in none of the other three cells? So you have four cells, okay? In one of them, we get something that is different than general LP, namely polynomially many queries. In the other three cells, it's exponential, just like general, general linear program problem. So why does this structure help only for randomized algorithms that give approximate solutions? I don't know, but I think it's a, it's a very interesting question to understand really what goes at work there. Okay, well, the other question is of course, uh, can you push this to, to approximate Nash equilibria? So here is the work that, uh, that uh, Babichenko did and, and other, other people. And I think that's, uh, that's uh, yes, I think I'm on time. Okay, so that's, uh, that's my end uh, slide.
you can, you can read it yourself about queries. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? What do you mean by the last question? I mean, it, is it the last question because it's... Sorry, solved? sorry, say again, what? What do you mean by the last open question? I mean, is, is it Lukashenko solved or is there... Was no, it? no, uh, there is... There is uh, uh, it partially solved in terms of what's called well-supported um, approximate mesh equilibria. I think that's settled completely by now, right? Am I right? No, I'm almost completely. He's still uh, not 100% uh, happy, but uh, let's say. Uh, uh, but, for, but without the well-supported, uh, I, I don't think anything useful is known, right? And that's what Christos was talking about uh, at the end of his talk yesterday. That's the best that we know. If you know anything better, we'd like to know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, speaking of approximate mass equilibria, there are two notions of approximate parallelic equilibria. One uh, is yeah. misbehaving. Yeah, so. Okay, so we are talking about the one that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> No, the question is how do you <laughs> No, the question is how, how do you put the epsilon? Do you put the epsilon ex ante or ex post? Okay? So this epsilon appears ex ante, which means that, that if the, uh, your error is no more than epsilon, for any action, you cannot improve by more than epsilon. But maybe that action is played with very small probability. You're not conditioning. So if you divide, then the error will be much higher. Okay? So it's epsilon in the sense of linear programming. All inequalities are satisfied instead of less or equal zero, less or equal epsilon. That's in this, in this sense, which in, in, in game theoretic sense, you could say maybe you're not happy enough. On the other hand, the results on dynamics are like this. That's the kind of uh, approximation that you want to get. For course, that makes sense. Maybe it makes more sense. I would, uh, yeah, because you don't have to condition. That's that's correct. Yeah, yeah. You you add you add up all those things and uh, um, yeah. You don't have to replace your average by that. Yes, yes. It makes more sense. Correct. Okay. Other question? No. Okay.